Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I am Joe Johnson and once again I am joined by Kim Urbanowski. Welcome back, Kim. Hi, Joe. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. If it's not too late to say Happy New Year. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> What's the cutoff on Happy New Year? Um, February 1st, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Or, or as soon as you learn to write 2024 on your check, yeah. then you can stop saying it. I posted on uh, <laughs> social media the other day, I said we're we're a few weeks into 2024 and I'm still writing, don't cash until Friday. I'm like, right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, it is freezing out there. Yeah. Uh, how are you enjoying this weather? Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the super cold. You no. know, I can deal with it if it's, as long as it, the wind isn't whipping, it's fine. But, it, you know, I could do without it. This is the cold that just doesn't matter what you're wearing. It just seems to penetrate what right. you're wearing and yeah. it hurts. Yeah. And I had to actually, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of driving around with coats and gloves and stuff like that on, but I have my big wool gloves ready to go just yeah. in case, you know. I never I left know. my apartment over the weekend, and uh, so when it came time to go back to work on Monday, I went outside, hit my key fob, my door wouldn't open, <laughs> I'm pulling on my driver's side door, right. it wouldn't open. Luckily, I was able to get the passenger side open, so I started the car from the passenger side, and when it warmed up enough, I was eventually able to get the door open, but that's, that's, that's that cold. That's really cold, and then I did venture out on Saturday to do some shopping, but I had forgotten that there was so much snow on the top of my car that when I opened the hatch, <laughs> all this <laughs> stuff went flying Avalanche. everywhere. I was like, ooh, oopsie, <laughs> messed up. Now, one of the reasons I never left the apartment uh, this past weekend was, of course, football. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the most part, the, the wild card playoffs were a dud. Most of the games were a blowout and they were ugly. But the best and most exciting game of the weekend was our Detroit Lions of course. playing the Rams. And, uh, you know, there's, of course, your heart says, I want them to win, but your head is like, uh, uh, can maybe. they win? Yeah. And uh, that was the best game of the weekend, and it was so much fun. And to see what that win means to this city. No. Um, the era of same old Lions, you know, that's over. It's over. We we got our first win in 30 years. You can't say that anymore. You can't say, well, the last win was 30 right. years ago. It's exciting. So it was a big deal. It yeah. was amazing. So uh, a couple of people have been talking about it actually being in the building and just being really loud and yeah. never heard it that loud before. It's really exciting. I know. I, I don't I don't watch a lot of football, but I might actually. <laughs> might, might, might pay attention for this. Well, of course, we got another big one this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought we were going to host Philly. Uh, they lost last yeah. night, so they're hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, another home game for the Lions. This is crazy. I, know. I mean, being a lifelong Lions fan, that we are now looking at the next round of the playoffs, this is like a dream come true. It I is, feel like I'm going to wake up and... Uh, it's going to be all a dream. Can you imagine how many people out there are right now trying to figure out how to get tickets, where can I get tickets? Yeah, from oh what gosh. I hear, it's pretty crazy that tickets are reselling at the basement, like 600 bucks is like the low end. And if you have lower bowl tickets, they can sell for $1,000 or more. Oh, so, real. yeah. Be worth it for this, though, I think. 5000 we're hearing from over here. So Wow. Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. I don't, you know, I don't. The thing about if you if you're a season ticket holder and and you're offered uh, these playoff tickets, the thing is don't resell them because you don't want Tampa Bay fans buying them Ooh. and coming to Detroit and filling those seats. And more than likely, that's what's going to happen. That's true. That's a good point. So. If they want to come up, they can wait outside <laughs> in the that's cold. Right. One of the coolest <laughs> videos I saw uh, posted on social media is when the fans left Ford Field. People were high-fiving and hugging, and you yeah. hear car horns everywhere uh, beeping and going off. And, uh, you know, I used to say that a regular season win was like a playoff win for the Lions. Like, uh -huh. we appreciated every single win of the season. Right. And now we have to kind of raise our expectations. Like, the you know, the Patriots and Kansas City, these elite teams that go to the, the playoffs every year, yeah. that should be our expectation now is now we have a team where we'll be disappointed if they don't reach the playoffs next season. So That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's exciting. 
So anything else going on in the township? Anything you want to talk about? I mean, you know, we just plugging along with Great Lakes Athletic Club. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's not even been that. a month since we, you know, took, took over, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, we've been getting to know the employees over there. And I'm over there quite a bit, you know, just having to, you know, go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but I, there are so many people there every time I go. Um, so it's really nice to see kids there over the break and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's plugging along and they're making some repairs and, you know, they're getting some feedback from people that have been there for a while and, and our Parks and Rec team is really, really killing it. I mean, I'm so proud of them. It was a lot of work to do over the holidays and everyone pulled together as a team and that, that makes me really proud yeah. of them. Yeah, I understand that some of the staff is already working out of the building and mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, Tracy, our receptionist up front, uh, she called over to Parks and Rec to ask a question from one of the staff people and was told that she was over at GLAC. <laughs> and uh, Tracy said, what's GLAC? And uh, Great Lakes Athletic yeah. Club. And I'm like, okay, maybe we need to rethink that. Oh, there, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's going to be, there's probably going to be a, a little bit of a name change or whatever, but you know, it's got to, we've got to settle into it and figure it out. Yeah. What it's, you know, how it feels, I guess. And like, you know, when you move into a new home, you don't know, maybe the furniture doesn't look right. You got to rearrange it sometimes and yeah. make it right. So what kind of fun stuff is there to do for people who go over to, to GLAC? Um, You know, the pool is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard it's really warm. Um, and they just put new lighting in there so you can see it used to be really dark. Mm -hmm. It was pretty, it was pretty oppressive in there. So there are new lights and, and um, you know, the swim teams are going to continue to do their thing. So, um, you know, but there's the group fitness. All those things are still happening. Yeah. We haven't decided, you know, on, on what's going to happen in the evolution of it yet. That's going to take a long time. So the things that are happening right now are the same things that have been happening. Yeah. See people lifting weights and... You know, and doing the their track classes. And yep. The cardio. Yeah. Did you know? I didn't. We, I just found this out today. The track. You're supposed to. It switches every day. Like so, you go clockwise one day, and then the next day they flip the arrow, and you got to go counterclockwise. Why do they do that? Do you know? Well, so that you're not like, it's your body gets used to going a different way. So if huh. you only walk in circles, because you're not a NASCAR, I mean, you're a person, yeah, yeah. right? So your hips are doing one thing while you're walking this way, okay. and then you, you flip it the other day. So don't go every other day to go walking on the track, because yeah. then you defeat the purpose. But anyway, yeah. interesting little tidbit. And then of course, there's the little cafe standard in uh, yeah. company. Tell us about that. So a lot of really good smoothies. The three gentlemen that own that place, um, I just met him one of them the other day down in the chamber office actually but they re um not rebranded but they kind of reopened and added a lot of new menu items but they've got really good sandwiches and yeah. the smoothies are really good and um it's a nice place to go and it's open to everyone i mean you don't and they've got a lot of space in there so if you you know if you have a meeting or something you want to meet someone somewhere yeah. you go in it's really nice yeah they Good had food. their uh, official ribbon cutting with the chamber mm -hmm. uh, earlier in 2023 yeah. apparently it had been vacated for a little while yeah um and so they came in took it over and are yeah. serving food that's awesome yeah and they're really really um nice they're really nice people I've, I've, of course like i said i've been in there a couple times just in the course of business but um yeah good food that's get great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so get out there, and uh, if you're looking to keep busy during these frigid months, go yeah. to Great Lakes Athletic Center and walk the track, do some cardio. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Now we're going to transition. Uh, you, you may have heard uh, just recently there was an announcement made that uh, former Lake Orion yeah. Schools uh, Superintendent Marion Janopoulos had passed away yeah. uh, recently. Uh, I dug into our archives and I found the news story that we did a couple years ago. It was during COVID 2020. Uh, un unfortunately, her last meeting was done during yeah. a Zoom meeting because the boards weren't meeting in person during COVID. Yeah. Um, but she did say her goodbyes um, during that Zoom meeting. And so we want to show you a little bit of that clip. Uh, and then that's going to segue into an upcoming event that's going to be taking place in the community uh, in a few weeks, the uh, Rotary Club's Ice Cup Golf mm -hmm. Challenge. So what you're seeing in that clip was last year's event, but they are currently taking people to sign up for uh, a number of holes that will be set up in downtown Lake Orion and on the lake uh, in just a few weeks. So you got to be 
an avid golfer <laughs> yeah. to get out there and do that. Um, so we're going to take a break, go to this video clip, and when we come back, we'll have Ben Kirby, Lake Orion Community School Superintendent, joining us here on the set. On Wednesday, June 24th, Superintendent Janopoulos attended her final Lake Orion School Board meeting, again via Zoom, as her colleagues wished her well. Janopoulos capped off a 50-year career in education, beginning a stint as superintendent of Oxford Schools in 1993. After retiring in 2000, she was selected to act as interim superintendent with Lake Orion Community Schools to fill in for outgoing superintendent Ken Gutman in 2010. In early 2011, the board voted to extend her contract. Over the next decade, Janopoulos became quite popular with faculty and students alike. In 2019, she appeared in the homecoming parade as homecoming queen. Mrs. Janopoulos is currently wearing the 2019 homecoming queen crown and sash, which we will be giving to our newly appointed queen on Friday night. But the one thing I do want to especially thank Heidi, uh, when I had cancer four years ago, she is the one who stepped up and really worked and really took over and made a huge difference. And I'm most appreciative, Heidi. In closing, I want to thank the board, this board and previous boards that I've worked with for your support throughout these past years. Uh, some years have been more difficult than others, but I'm really grateful uh, to have been allowed to provide the leadership in this school district uh, that has really, in my mind, I am most proud of. I think we have done some amazing things, and it's as a result of the support of the school board and those who have come before you. So with that, I say goodbye, and no 783 board members meetings. Good luck, Rick. Thank you. On the morning of Saturday, February 4th, Members of Oakland County got together in downtown Lake Orion for the traction-gaining ninth annual ice golf tournament supported by the Rotary Club. We are having our ninth annual ice golf uh, tournament downtown Lake Orion. It supports the uh, our projects for the Rotary Club in Lake or here in Lake Orion. Um, some of our projects are beds for kids. Um, we also support the Lamp of Learning uh, efforts over at the high school. Um, and then various other uh, smaller projects that we have going on downtown. Uh, we sell out every year. This is the first year we've gone from uh, nine holes to 15. Um, and we sold out this year at 15. So um, it's crazy Lake Orion folks. They want to do something during the winter. So they come downtown and help us raise a little money and have fun around town. There is a hole over at the law office where you tee off into the elevator, you take the elevator upstairs, you go through their law office and back downstairs. So that's the uh, Wiesner Law Firm uh, down next to uh, Sagebrush. And then we also have a hole that's actually out on the ice over in Greens Park. So every hole is different and it's up to the uh, sponsors to be creative. Rotary Club President Mark Vizina describes the event from his law group office. That's a testament to our committee that put this tournament on. They went out and engaged the business community to that they want to have their name associated with this, uh, uh, not just for their own business, but just to they know what good we do as a Rotary Club and how much this this means to us to carry out our mission, and uh, and and they just want to be part of it, which is great. So this is mainly for our beds for kids. Uh, that's our our primary mission. So we identify families in need of uh, furniture and uh, and beds, and we purchase beds and actually deliver beds for them. Greens Park is, one, is another one. Um, uh, Pine Tree Elementary School, we buy equipment. Uh, we bought a service dog for them several years ago. And uh, just really, um, and then also the Pollination Park, the new one behind the library on Joslin, uh, on the trail right there. So we, we just got an award from the Chamber of Commerce for our beautification award. And, it's, uh, and that's gonna be something that's a continuing mission for the club. We meet on Thursday mornings at United Methodist Church uh, and every, uh, every for an hour and uh, feel free to come. And or you can reach out uh, either at the sign-in desk or you can come over anytime and, and knock on the door here at the office. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Orion today. That does not look like my idea of fun, uh, being <laughs> out in the cold <laughs> golfing. But uh, are you a golfer? I am. I enjoy golf. Yeah. I don't know if I'd enjoy golf in this uh, <laughs> this temperature, but 
<laughs> joining oh us gosh. now is Ben Kirby, uh, superintendent of Lake Orion Community Schools. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Um, before we get into our main topic, we rolled a video clip of uh, Mary Angelopoulos. Uh, she was your predecessor before you came in as superintendent. Any memories, any thoughts you want to share on uh, Marion? Well, many of the uh, staff that I work with was blessed to, to work with her. I was not. I uh, definitely was aware of the impact that she made uh, over 50 years of education. Yeah. You know, she really made a difference uh, for a lot of children, a lot of staff. Uh, and the people that worked, worked with her really, really appreciated her. Um, so she clearly uh, put a good team in place. Uh, the team I inherited is one that, uh, that our whole community can be, be proud of. So you come in smack dab in the middle of COVID, so you <laughs> face some challenges uh, coming into this district, um, but it's been an amazing uh, tenure so far with new construction and improvements to schools. Um, what has it been like uh, being superintendent since you've come on board? Yeah, we're really blessed to have a very supportive community. We, again, we have a great staff. Um, yeah, coming in the middle of COVID was definitely maybe not the most opportune time, <laughs> but the best thing about it is it can only get better. Yeah, and, exactly. And so uh, one of the things uh, that we really felt like we were trying to do is is really just manage conflict through through that. There was so much, uh, you know, a lot of different thoughts about things, yeah. uh, but we continue to uh, educate uh, to our maximum uh, potential, and we continue to do the bond projects and continue to you know improve our buildings. We've uh, built two buildings during that wow. time frame, Early Childhood Center and Blanche Sims, and those are just beautiful facilities, and we thank the community for that support. How is that possible? How are these new developments? possible. Now there's a difference between the bond and the millage. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. There's School funding is very complicated and that's part of the reason that we're doing two uh, millage proposals at one time. A lot of the work that, that I'm doing when I'm going out is really helping people understand how schools are funded. So we get money from the state of Michigan through uh, the Per Pupil Foundation, but that uh, portion of that money, the 18 mills, which is the non-homestead, we have to get from our local community in order to get the full foundation allowance. If our community doesn't support the non-homestead and the 18 mills, we can't send 18 mills to the state of Michigan to turn around and send us back, plus the additional funds. So if we ever fall below that 18 mills, we aren't sending enough, therefore the state doesn't send us enough back, mm -hmm. So we don't get a full foundation allowance if this non-homestead millage doesn't pass. And so again, we've been very fortunate since 1994 that it's been, um, you know, supported and that it's moved forward. Um, it is, you know, a significant amount of money. It's about $11 million a year. Um, and ultimately that is for our general operations, allows us to do, we have flexibility around that, but then we have the bond. And the bond is the very large projects that we do, our buildings that we actually create, um, the large the large items that you see, the building of new schools, that's bond. Um, sinking fund is different. Sinking fund is more of your small scale projects, the purchase of properties or um, other items that could help enhance your, uh, your school facilities. And certainly what we've spent a lot of money on is uh, security improvements. Uh, those are things that were in the sinking fund legislation laws back in uh, 2016 when this was approved. So that is what we can spend money on. And again, there's some changes with that, and that's why we're looking to do a replacement right. millage with the sinking fund. Okay. So the election is February 27th. Um, what will people see on the ballot? You said they're two separate items on the ballot? Yes, there are two separate items, and we did this uh, during the presidential primary so that it would be no cost to the school district or to the voters. Uh, we have options as to when we do our, our uh, millages, but we did uh, choose that for that reason and because we do think there will be a good voter turnout and we want people to weigh in on, on these. Um, so as far as the, the two, yes, we are, do, we are doing replacements for both of them. They're both 10 years. Um, they both will uh, continue at the exact same rates where they currently are today. So those, uh, you know, homeowners, business owners, everybody maintains the rates at which they currently are for both of these things. Um, and it would be the 18 mills and it would be the um, 1.8862 is what the sinking fund is. And um, so we really tried to keep that in mind as we were asking, you know, having the ask. Yeah. The voters will see uh, two separate pieces of language because they are two separate millages. Um, we will ask the voters for the sinking fund to authorize, or excuse me, for the non-homestead to authorize 21 mills. 
the school district can never levy more than 18, right. but that gives us a buffer for uh, the Headley uh, Amendment that's <coughs> in the Michigan Constitution that annually ticks those types of things down. Um, and that's why we're doing a replacement because when this was approved uh, back in uh, 14, the non-homestead, it has ticked down because of the Headley and it's really close to that 18 and we run the risk of our final year of yeah. being below 18, which would mean we wouldn't get the full student funding uh, for that year or we go back to the voters in a separate election to ask for them to approve it for one year and that doesn't seem to be a fiscally responsible thing to do. That's mm -hmm. smart. So what's on your slate? What would you like to see happen or what does the district have planned over the next 10 years or so? What are some high priority uh, things you want to tackle? Well, 10 years is a long time, you know, <laughs> so we, we do a strategic plan for five years and those five years it seems like it's a really long time. Uh, obviously we are in the middle of, um, you know, the bond and the bond is a really big piece of what we do in the school district um, with the improvements and so on. Our largest scale projects are really completed. We have, uh, we'll start our planning uh, for the next, next three years. Um, of the bond this month where that actually impacts uh, Scripps, the old high school, mm -hmm. um, and then, or excuse me, um, the CERC, the CERC, CERC yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then that, we call it the Scripps campus, high school campus, but we're gonna work on, try to work on the traffic flow there. Um, and then the high school facility, there's some needs there that we have. Paint Creek Elementary is, is, uh, is another area that will have some needs. But academically, we continue to, to push and um, really try to, uh, you know, bring in the new technologies. You know, the AI piece has scared a lot of people, but we've, we've embraced it and tried to help our staff um, understand how to utilize that and how to help uh, our students utilize that as a resource. Um, that's part of what we do. Um, so, I mean, overall, we're continuing to try to uh, get more kids into trades uh, and those types of those careers. You know, we have children that go off to, to college. You know, it depends on what the families, you know, want for their children, what the children want for themselves. But we do try to get them to their maximum potential. So as far as like 10 years, that's really hard to say because honestly, we're, we're uh, we are getting students prepared for jobs that don't even exist yeah. right now. Wow. So that'll continue to evolve. You know, it's amazing. I, I came out to this community in late 93, so it's been over 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And I still think of the high school as being the new high school. Right, right. And my yeah. brain is lot. the new yeah. high school. But it's closing in on 30 years. Right. Yeah. What are you seeing at the high school? Is, is, is there anything that needs to be addressed at the high school, or do you sort of knock those down as things happen. How's, how's the high school holding up in these 30 years? Well, just like any, any facility that's 30 years old, it needs repairs, and that's why the, we have the sinking fund currently in place. That's why we need to continue to have the sinking fund because it really helps us with some of those small-scale projects. Uh, and maintenance items and things, you know, the roof, you know, yeah. we know we're gonna have issues with that. We gotta address that. The parking lots, we've gotta address that. Um, like Weather like this causes havoc, um, <laughs> you know, so we have to do those kinds of things. And again, that sinking fund money, those are the types of projects that we can do so we don't have to use a general operating fund, mm -hmm. which is how we pay for our staff, how we pay for our uh, student programs and all of that. Um, you know, when you look at the high school, it's a beautiful facility but there's always ways to freshen up, make it look nicer. You, when you start looking at some of the things that other districts have done, and we've certainly done that, um, you know, there's some very large uh, ticket items that you could look at, whether they be performance centers, uh, f you know, field houses, al alternative or uh, auxiliary gyms. I mean, there's just different things, you know, that, that you could do. And again, it just uh, comes with an interest. And what we are really trying to focus in, be focused on in the next three years is, you know, how do we how do we support the robotics to be able to continue their practices when we remove some of the circ? And how do we have our athletic teams continue to strive and, and thrive and, and do the work that they do? And our academic programs continue to be, you know, on the on the edge all the time. And we have 100, 120 plus opportunities uh, course wise for our students. That's going to continue to expand as these jobs evolve and and uh, our student interests become more known. Throw some numbers at me. I, I know in the late 90s, uh, the district was experiencing this boom and they were bringing on new teachers and enrollment was skyrocketing. And then it kind of hit a peak and sort of leveled off. Now there's talk of all kinds of new residential development in downtown Lake Orion. What do you see now as far as enrollment district-wise and what direction is it heading? Are you anticipating it 
going up with this new development, leveling off, or is there a decline right now? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question that doesn't have a great answer, and here's <laughs> yeah. the reason why. We know a lot of families have left the state of Michigan, right? So with the families go the children. So when you look at the number of students that are actually in public education, that number in totality has gone down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at our student enrollment, our our upper class, our seniors, juniors, and sophomores, those classes are larger than our incoming kindergarten. So overall, the population ends up going down. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start talking about some of these different residential pieces that come in, we, we have been paying attention to that. And again, with a sinking fund, that allows us to put rooms on, not new buildings, but rooms on if we do have the capacity uh, needs necessary. We have very good class sizes in our district currently, so we know that we have some buffer, so to speak, for new children, and we keep that in mind. We have a school of choice program that allows us to bring children in from outside of the district, but we have in the last uh, year, and we will again, reduce that by about 50%, the number of children we bring in, mm -hmm. expecting that we're gonna have more uh, coming in. So yeah. those projects, a lot of them are, they're there, they're in concept. Some of them, there's lumber out there, and some of them, you know, people are starting to move in. Uh, but until that all really happens, you know, it, it is hard to predict that type of thing. But one of the things that we do have a really good success rate on is the birth rate. And the birth rate continues to go down in our county. And we continue to have, over the last 10 years, we've been really good with our capture rate, with the number of children and the birth rate and, and so on in our public schools. So we spent a lot of time talking about it and uh, we do a pretty good job with projections and we'll, we'll continue to do that. But those are some of the strategies and things that we think about when we go through that. That's awesome. Um, you know, this district wins award after award after award. All the schools do, <laughs> the Blue Ribbon Awards oh, yeah. and all that stuff. What can you say to the voters um, who you want to come out to the polls in February about maintaining that, that level of quality? Yeah, and that's really what we're asking people to maintain as far as the expenses on their part. What we are telling them is we're going to maintain and go above. We're, we're going to continue to make our schools greater than they are. Every single day we're looking to try to improve. Uh, and and it's, it's not just about those that have children in our schools. That's about 33% of our, uh, you know, Orient Township population. But we have lots of facility rentals. We have lots of uh, community events that happen within our schools. Their, their property values are directly tied to the success of the schools. Um, make no mistake about it, we have a good reputation and it's about the people that are within our school district and the children that we're serving. Um, and that all comes into place because we have great community support. So it's all intertwined yeah. and the, when you see communities that don't have that support, you see schools that can't bring in the best instructional people, the best uh, educational leaders and those types of things. So we are in a very good cycle and I hope that people understand that, that it's not only about the school system, it's their own properties, it's their own reputation, it's their own services they're gonna have in their township. Uh, it's all very interwoven and we're in a really good spot and I'd hate to see that interrupted. Yeah. Um, there's always a faction out there who's just anti-tax, you yeah. know, I, I don't want to pay more taxes than I have to, but um, it's for the greater good, right? I mean, yeah. like you just said, it benefits the entire community. Yeah, it really does. And the way schools are uh, funded, we have no option. So since 1994 with Proposal A, we have to have the non-homestead to get full foundation allowance. There's not a lot of ways to create revenue in a school district. We get the, the money from Lansing with the um, uh, per pupil foundation allowance and then you can do bond and you can do sinking funds. You can try to sell property if you have property. You can do schools of choice, which we do a little bit of schools of choice. You can do shared time services, but those are all really small ways to get money. We have about a hundred million dollar budget uh, that we work from. But a lot of that money, the over $10 million that the state gave us last year, our $100 million budget, it wasn't for us to spend. It was to turn around and put it into the retirement system. So we couldn't even use that for our people. So mm -hmm. it's just really complicated. And yes, it, it hurts paying taxes. But the thing that I would say is that we've been very thoughtful in that we are not increasing uh, the, the levies for the next 10 years with these replacements. They will remain exactly where they're at today. 
Um, now your home values hopefully will go up, so you might see a little bit of an increase that way, but what we are actually levying will not go up for the next decade with these replacements. So people can look at it as an assurance that there's going to be some stability for them because um, it's the only way we can get money. So we're going to have to, you know, continue to try to uh, find ways and get ways to, to get money, and there's very limited uh, ways and avenues. Now, in the documents that we have, yeah. the term non-homestead mm -hmm. means not necessarily this is going to impact homeowners. This Correct. Up affects businesses, uh, second homes, rental property, and vacant land. So, Correct. So right. that's not necessarily coming out of, f from homeowners. Correct. No. The PRE, primary residence exemption, any of your properties, your, your primary home, is not part of that 18 mil. So even though you don't have to pay that, you get the vote that it gets approved or not approved. Uh, so that's, again, part of the proposal A strategy was everybody gets to vote on it, a fewer people pay for it, so it's going to get supported in communities. I think, you know, that was yeah. kind of the mindset with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. That's great. Yeah. So that's, the election is February 27th. Yes. Is there anything else going to be on that ballot, or is that going to be the only issue that people are asking to go out and vote on that day? I'm not sure. Don't know. It's a is presidential it? primary. Yeah. Is so oh, that's okay. Yeah. So there is. Yep, there is yep. it's a presidential there. primary, and that was one of our strategies when we looked at it, is what other asks are there in the community? We're not familiar with any additional local asks, you know, when you look at, you know, some of the different um, levies that, that, are, yeah. that are up. So, yeah. Good, um, good. I, I will say, just on a personal note, um, this is, I have four dragons. My oldest graduated in 2011 and then I had a 21 and a 22 and then now I have an eighth grader coming up to the high school. One of the reasons we moved here was because of the schools and mm -hmm. I have never regretted that decision at all. At, I mean, you know, I know you got emails from me during the pandemic because I was being an obnoxious band mom, but anyway, it's, it, it, I, I cannot speak more highly of the education that my children have gotten and the level of care and concern that they've gotten from administration, from their teachers. It, I, I, I'm just a, a, an impressed parent and I fully support this. Like I, you know. Well, I, we appreciate that. You have to, you have to invest in, in the kids in your, in your community, you yeah. know. You just really do. So uh, yeah, it, I hear that all the time that people, when they make a decision on where to live, schools can yeah, be a huge absolutely. factor in that. Absolutely. And you know, I like to use the phrase "quality of life." That the absolutely. schools contribute to the quali quality of life here in Lake Orion. And it's circular too. If you have, if you have a strong business community that gets support from the families in the community, it's all paying. It's all in this the system. I used to say this you know, at the chamber all the time. If you've got strong businesses, you're gonna have strong nonprofits and you're gonna have, yeah. uh, it's all yeah. together. It yeah. has to be, and if you mess with any bit of that ecosystem, it, you just don't have the kind of community that we have, yeah. so. Yeah, and what I really what I want to emphasize is I want people to be educated about what we're asking yeah. and what we've done. We've really been great stewards of the money for our, for our community, and we have it all laid out there on the website. We, yeah. uh, If you go to our website in the middle, um, there's an election tab. So that election tab will get you to, to all the Q&A, to get you to the presentations, get you to how you know voters you know vote how they pay for taxes where they vote uh, how we've spent the sinking fund dollars that we've had how we've spent the bond dollars mm -hmm. that we've had that's really the bottom line and I want people to know all the things that we've done so that they know all of the things that we will continue to do uh, as leaders in the in the community so that's like Orion schools dot org you got it correct? you got it all right so yeah head to that website if you have any more questions I'm sure you can call this gentleman yes, personally for sure. if yeah. you have any questions yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah. So um, should be a bat phone directly to him. <laughs> well, here's a great, great strategy: is to get a hold of our communications uh, director, Mark Snyder. He has a communications <laughs> account because what he does, he does a wonderful thing of either helping people get to the the information, yeah. or to somebody that can answer the question. It doesn't have to necessarily come to me. We have a great team that's sure. that's ready and willing to yeah. serve. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so February 27th, head, uh, head to the polls and determine the, uh, the fate of Lake Orion Community Schools. Yes, absolutely. All right, Cast thanks for coming vote. down. I appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate I hope you we help get me. the word out. All right. All right, and we're going to leave you now. Uh, we're going to go to a segment that we recorded 
uh, with an organization that works closely with the schools, the North Oakland Community Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Let's take a look at this clip from a recent interview. My name's Jenny, and I want to welcome you on another episode of Orient Update. Today you're in for a very special treat because I am joined by the one and only Tanya Hamilton with the North Oakland Community Coalition. Tanya, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I thought it was really important and want everyone to know about the North Oakland Community Coalition because the work you do is so important. So can you start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself and your role with the coalition? Sure. No, I really appreciate this opportunity. The NOCC, North Oakland Community Coalition, has existed in our community since 2007. So we are established, we've been here for quite a while, but surprisingly not, not everyone knows about who we are and what we do. So I actually joined the coalition as executive director in October of 2017. And um, what we do as an organization is work with community members, all mm -hmm. sectors of our community, to support the mental wellness um, of our youth and our families. We also heavily focus on substance misuse prevention. And this is so important for the youth as well as the adults in our community. It's important for everybody um, to be aware of this. What are some of the key initiatives that you guys do in the community? Yeah, out in the community as a whole, um, we have a number of initiatives. So some may recognize our um, biannual drug take back days where we mm -hmm. partner with our local police department and sheriff's department to encourage residents to clean out their medicine cabinets. This keeps medications out of our water system. It properly disposes of them so that they don't um, get into the hands of people that they could hurt. And so we do that every April and October in partnership with our law enforcement. Um, we also um, were very pleased to announce the new partnership with the library that is hosting a Save a Life box. So they reached out to us with interest in hosting one of these mm -hmm. boxes, um, which is, a, they're a, is available to the community 24 hours a day, every day of the year, where people can access Narcan. Mm -hmm. So that is a medication that instantly reverses the effect of an accidental overdose. So that's available outside of the library doors all year long. So that's a wonderful resource to have for the community. It's a wonderful resource. You know, part of the beautiful thing about having this available is it reduces the stigma around opioid overdose and um, having being able to supply that medication to everyone in the community allows us all to be that first responder if we find someone in need. Now I know you said that um, it reduces the stigma which is so important because it's not a topic that people like to talk about mm -hmm. and it's a very hard topic to talk about but it's something that's needed in every community no matter how safe or how great you think the community is. There's problems throughout the country mm -hmm. um, that need this. And you said it's right outside the library, so it's accessible 24 seven. There's pamphlets and other information there as well too, right? There is, uh, you can even find fentanyl test strips inside okay. of the box, but yes, in instructions on how to use the Narcan mm -hmm. is also available in that box. And we just, you know, we know that fentanyl is showing up in more and more substances. Mm -hmm. um, in the, the country, but certainly here in Michigan as well. And most cases of overdose are people who were unknowingly poisoned by fentanyl. So having that available in your homes, on your person, in your office, is a really great way to help someone if they need help. So yeah, the uh, North Oakland Community Coalition, what a great organization yes. doing a lot of great things in this community. Yeah, I used to work for them many years ago uh, and, and I did like social media for them for a while and then moved on to work for the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities, which is the, com the organization that put that box there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I was interesting, it was interesting to see that bag, that Deterra bag. Mm -hmm. It's an activated charcoal bag 
that you put, you know, your pills, medications in, and then you add some water and it deactivates mm -hmm. the medications and stuff. In 2015, I believe, is when those bags were brand new and I had seen an article about it. And I brought it to the people at the ACHC and I found um, a way to get a bunch of them for free. Oh, wow. So that was the first time that the coalitions in Oakland County were given a bunch of those bags to give out. So I'm really happy to see that they're still doing that and they're still using them because um, it is, uh, you know, it is the thing that people don't want to talk about, but the reality is, you know, you got to keep people safe from those medications, so. Yeah, and that brings up a good point that, you know, you don't want to just flush them or throw them in the garbage no. or whatever. You need to dispose of unused mm -hmm. medication properly yeah. or um, and don't just leave them in the medicine cabinets either because that's no. how they can fall into the hands of young people. Yeah, and, and I'm going to tack on also if, if that's not an option for you to go there, that there are the, the medication boxes that you can put your stuff into at the um, Oakland County substation and yeah. then the, the, you know, uh, police department downtown. Um, yeah. So there are multiple ways to dispose of stuff. One of the craziest stories I heard of is, I remember reading an article that there were young people who would get together and yeah. each one had the responsibility of going into the medicine cabinet yep. and grabbing some random pills. They would all come together, have a big punch bowl, and everyone would drop their pills into the punch bowl and and just eat random medication yeah. and I'm like what is happening yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's so important that you just don't leave yeah. this stuff uh, in the medicine cabinets because it could wind up in the wrong hands so, right yeah and yeah. even if you think because you know kids are kids can sometimes just try silly things yeah and, and they don't decisions. know yeah. they don't know that's yeah not, so. not anything nefarious that they're trying. I think sometimes they just, they're being kids and they're yeah. and not you making good choices. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so uh, changing topics. So, uh, you know, the high school sports season, uh, winter sports season is in uh, f uh, full swing. Uh, we got basketball, we got hockey, all kinds of fun stuff going on. Our Owen TV truck uh, goes out and covers a lot of these uh, uh, sporting events. Uh, or Joey, our, our uh, sports guy, goes over to the high school and supervises productions where the students are yeah. actually running the production and recording these games. Uh, so there's lots of activity going on right now. And so if you want an update of what's happening uh, with Lake Orion uh, School Sports, uh, here's Joey with an update. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we are back as the winter sports season is in full swing as we give updates on boys and girls basketball along with hockey. The Lake Orion boys basketball team has been having a successful season so far as they had a lot of player movement in the offseason with graduating seniors and getting new players into the rotation. There were some question marks at the beginning of the season, but now that we are into January, we are starting to see how this team plays and operates. They opened their season with wins over Oxford and Rochester, then followed those up with some tough losses against Notre Dame Prep and Clarkson. However, Lake Orion was able to bounce back from the losses and win five straight games before winter break. They did lose their first game back against a good Troy team on January 4th, but they made up for it winning their next game on the road at Seahome. The Dragons record sits at 8-3 with a 4-1 league record, which is third place behind the two Troy teams in the OAA White Division. The Dragons have gotten good production from guards Gabe Scott and Ethan Sharkey, as well as Brandon High School transfer Zach Price Parks. Although I do believe one of the strengths of this team is their depth. We'll give you updates as the final push for the playoffs begin. The Lake Orion girls basketball team seems to be having another outstanding season after making it to the regional finals last season against eventual state title winner, West Bloomfield. Right now, they are sitting at 7-0 on the year and haven't lost a step, even though they graduated a lot of seniors last year. It just goes to show how much this program has grown in a decently short time. Coach Bob Bridges is at it once again at the helm, and the name of his game is defense. Lake Orion is holding teams to right around 40 or under, with a few games where they've held teams under 30 points. Unfortunately for the Dragons, their schedule is about to pick up in a big way. Tonight, they will take on West Bloomfield for a rematch from last year. This game will be streamed on ONTV and DragonBroadcasting.org if you wish to watch the game live. 
Then, on Friday, Lake Orion will travel to Clarkson, which is always a tough-fought game for Lake Orion. And even after that, they will take on a 9-1 Kingston team. So the Lady Dragons can really prove themselves in the coming weeks, and once again prove that they can make a playoff push, even with a newly revamped roster. Good luck, ladies, in the coming weeks. And finally, we have the Lake Orion Dragons hockey team. The Lake Orion hockey team has been known to be one of the better programs in the state, but they have struggled the past couple of years, and unfortunately, this year is a little bit more of the same. The record sits at 3-9, and nine, and they haven't won a divisional game. But as usual, the OAA Red is a very tough division, with Clarkson, M1 United, and Stony Creek. Lake Orion has been in fairly close games, but the problem they've had recently is giving up goals. Now the good news for the Dragons is there are still plenty of games to turn the season around. If they can just stop getting into shootouts, they have a chance to make a run with a good amount of seniors on the roster. They will get M1 United this Thursday, which will be live streamed. If Lake Orion can get it going in the coming weeks, you never know what could happen in the playoffs. For more Lake Orion sports, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There, you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit youtube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. So yeah, the uh, Lake Orion Dragon sports team's always doing well. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Are you a sports mom? I'm turning into one, I think. <laughs> I don't know. My my youngest, he decided he wanted to try the wrestling club. I don't, he's not quite there yet. I just wanted to see what it was like. But all of a sudden, he's just he's going to these practices and he's coming home battered and bruised and happy <laughs> for some reason. So I don't know. I, I have to. I, I got to see about that. But you know. But he's still doing band. You know how I am. I'm the band mom. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's wrestling all of a sudden. That's so we'll awesome. see. We'll see where that goes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, our next clip we have coming up, man. This is going to take us back to warmer times. <laughs> uh, you know, throughout the summer, there were <laughs> concerts at Wildwood and yeah. at Children's Park and uh, the DDA's uh, LO Live Gazebo concerts. So let's uh, let's close your eyes and go back to warmer days here in Lake Orion <laughs> and enjoy this performance from uh, Chloe Kimes uh, at the Gazebo and Children's Park. My brain. 
Ah, yes, back when it was warmer. It warmed me up a little bit just watching that. <laughs> so Remember? I'll be counting down the days. I was just talking to someone the other day about car shows and mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's going to seem like an eternity before that stuff comes back. I'm not a winter person. Are you a winter person? I'm really not. I mean, I grew up in warm places, so I, you know, and I've been here for, I was born here. I'm from here. It's just not my thing. And and I was talking to somebody today that they were like, you know, I like to go outside and go sledding and this, that, and the other. And I just, it's such a, I don't know. I don't like to be bundled up and stuff. Right. I don't. I'd rather be in the sunshine and swimming, I think. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I see these uh, online articles and stuff where they go, oh, we really need snow for s the skiing and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's <laughs> a sh shame we're not getting oh, snow. Mm. But, and I understand the whole industry and stuff is just not mm -hmm. my thing. I mean, I think back to one time I was walking home from school in the middle of winter. And I sound like an old man. I walked to <laughs> and from school in winter, uphill, Barefoot. both ways. <laughs> and uh, I remember coming home and nobody was home. And I'm not sure what the story was, but I remember sitting on the porch, middle of winter, <laughs> oh, no. waiting for my mom to get home for like an hour or so. So miserable. Oh, I, I no. just don't like being out in the cold. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. I, I, well, I did a, a becoming an outdoor woman thing in Marquette in February, like a couple years ago, and I ended up sleeping in this thing called a Quincy, which is basically like an igloo, yeah. which is the, I don't know why I did it, but it was, <laughs> It was it for me. That's it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> well, there are lots of, uh, despite the temperatures and the weather, there's lots of activities coming up here in the Lake Orion community. Uh, so let's take a look at this week's Quick Hits. The Orion Library is partnering with the Oakland County Parks for a Winter Wildlife Workshop this Thursday. Come and learn about the animals found in and around Oakland County Parks and Trails during the frozen winter months. This program will take place at the library from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The Wind Nature Center will be hosting a hibernation investigation program on Saturday morning from 10 to 11.30. Learn about the animals who are snoozing the snow away. Who is a true hibernator and who has been fooling us? Come and cozy up by the fire as a naturalist answers these questions, reads a story, and more. Pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. Sixth through eighth grade students are invited to take an exam study break at the library this Saturday from 1 o'clock to 3. The afternoon will include card games, therapy dogs, pizza, and snacks. This program will help you de-stress before you hit the books again. The NOCC will be hosting its first All About Connection Suicide Prevention Training at Evergreen's Coffee and Bake Shop in Oxford on January 19th. This 90-minute interactive training begins at 2 o'clock and is designed to prepare everyday people to recognize the warning signs of a mental health crisis. To register, visit nlccmi.org. Well, it looks like the cold temperatures will be sticking around for a while. Wednesday's forecast is calling for mostly cloudy skies with a high of 17 and a low of 11. Cloudy on Thursday with a high of 20 and a low of 6. Snow showers on Friday with a high of 18 and a low of 2. Partly cloudy on Saturday with a high of 17 and a low of 4. And mostly sunny skies on Sunday with a high of 20 and a low of 13. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So the bad news is we have to deal with these temperatures through the end of the week. The yes. good news is, according to my app on my phone, that we're supposed to get up into the 30s, 40s, okay. and maybe even higher Mm -hmm. next week mm -hmm. so I'm kind of excited about that all yeah. of this will be gone uh, if it stays above freezing mm -hmm. that's fine yep that's fine I agree yeah now you said you took part in an event recently yeah. what did you do uh, you know the library is such a ugh, an amazing place um, some of us from the township did I think it was last month beginning of December maybe we did a trivia night that the the library hosted but we did it at ignite tavern it was really neat you would have probably I love you probably trivia. would have won because um there were a lot of questions but then and there were some of them more book based obviously because it's the library but then at the bottom there were pictures like stills from movies and you had to ident identify the movie and all That's of that easy. i know so <laughs> i think we came in second place but um we did really really well and then Everybody wins a book. You get to pick from a book. They had a big stack of books, and it was nice. Oh, wow. It was packed. It was packed, that back space. 
and then people were on the waiting list to get in. Oh, wow. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, I would love to do that again. But um, Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, all my books at home are mostly like movie related, entertainment related, history, that sort of stuff. What what occupies your bookshelf? You know, I have a lot of really interesting books because I, I don't like any one genre. Mm -hmm. I like to try stuff that's different. Um, and that's why like the the book sale is really important because you just bring the big bag and you can just put a bunch of stuff in yeah. there. Um, I, you know, I guess it depends on the type the time of year. It, in October, I like spooky season books, you know, something scary, thrillery. Um, I don't have a type of book, really. Yeah. I've got a lot of biography things that I want to read. Um, yeah. yeah. More cookbooks than anything, but that's not reading material. I have a couple of books on my nightstand, but they're, they're so thick. Mm -hmm. They're like that big, and I got to prepare myself mentally to crack open a book that I know yeah. is going to be a long-term commitment. It is a commitment. <laughs> yeah, and you got to make sure, you know, you don't start it too late at night because you're falling asleep. What did I just read? That's my issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to leave you with one last clip. Um, recently, uh, George Sinnott, who uh, hosts and produces uh, a show called Active Living, mm -hmm. uh, invited uh, Township Supervisor Chris Barnett and recreation uh, programmer Chelsea Petrusha uh, mm -hmm. to come in and talk about what's happening over at GLAC. Uh, let's take a look at that clip right now. Hello and welcome to Active Living. Today's going to be a special day. We've got Chris Barnett here, our supervisor, and we've got Chelsea Petrusa here. She's also from Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the thing, the big topic in Lake Orion, which is the purchase of the Great Lakes Athletic Club. Welcome to our program. Thanks, George. George, thanks for having us. We are excited to be here to talk about this, this exciting project. In the well, we're, we're excited to have you as well. All right. <laughs> well, there's a couple of, there's a lot, of, a lot of controversy going around in the neighborhood, as you probably know. We've got some people that's saying, oh man, we shouldn't have bought it. We got other people saying, you know what, it's the greatest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like to talk a little bit about the pluses and the minuses. I guess the first question is, and this is kind of a hard one to answer, is we've got health clubs in the area already. You've got Planet Fitness that you can join for 10 bucks a month. And uh, why would the township want to get involved in a health club? Yeah, so first of all, um, super glad to be here and excited to announce if, if, if residents don't know and haven't paid attention to what we've been up to, um, we've recently created a new position, Assistant Park, Parks and Recreation Director, and fill that with Chelsea. Yeah. So many Good of choice, our, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and listen, we agree. So uh, we can start there. Um, and and know that um, she came from another state where she worked in a center, a community center, uh, similar to what we mm -hmm. will eventually be. And you'll hear a little bit about that as we chat today. But I think the important message for our residents, and you use the word controversy, I would maybe challenge people and say, use the word opportunity. Okay. Um, there's a lot of interesting opinions out there, and, and they're all really valid. And I think what, um, um, I'll speak for myself, but the other board members that helped make this decision mm -hmm. and the other staff members, um, once we are able to sit down and chat with people um, and we have an open door at, regarding any topic, especially this one, um, we have won people over, I would say, with, with what our plan is and, and understanding mm -hmm. why the township would do this. So to answer your question specifically about why would we get in the health club business, I would tell you that we are temporarily in the health club business. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we um, purchased a gym that was um, positive cash flow. Um, we purchased the gym out of receivership. There's been some confusion about that. Um, it wasn't a bankruptcy, but essentially as of August 1st, um, Comerica Bank, the, the main creditor on the previous ownership group, um, called, the load, called the note, uh, mm -hmm. wanted the note to be paid in full the, uh, the previous ownership group said they weren't gonna do that. So Comerica appointed a third party, a receiver that came in and as of August 1st, 2023, they were the operators of the gym on behalf of the bank. So the staff stayed, but the payroll, everything from paying payroll to the consumer's energy bill, to the Comcast bill, to making decisions about the day-to-day -day operations were made by uh, the receiver called the Finia Group. So enter the township, okay. uh, and I know you'll, you'll talk about price and things like that, but to answer your question specifically, we made the conscious decision to take the opportunity based on years of resident feedback and us doing our own research on potentially building a community pool, a community center, uh, not just for seniors, 
uh, but for everyone. Um, and we saw this as a great opportunity to jump into the to that uh, realm for a fraction of the price it would cost us to do in 2023 or 24 or 25. Um, so in the short term, while it's a gym that's cash flow positive on a month to month basis, uh, it's in the best interest of the township to continue that model uh, while we work through what that transition is going to look like from the current operations to more of a community center. When it's all said and done, the vision that our board has, the vision that I have and Chelsea and Aaron and the rest of the leadership is a world renowned, <laughs> uh, yeah, state of the art, innovative state. community center. And I can tell you for me personally, I visited mm -hmm. Troy, um, Livonia, Macomb, Sterling Heights. Sterling Heights. Um, we are doing our homework because we're seeing what's working. Farmington Hills, we're seeing what's working in other right. communities, mm -hmm. um, what, what they would do different. And so there's going to be this transition process, which will honestly, frankly, probably be at least a year. Right. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to operate a gym. So there you go. Nice job, George, on uh, that interview, helping you get information out about the new uh, GLAC ownership. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to the township if you have any questions you want answered. Yes. Uh, that brings us to the close of another exciting ep episode of Orient Today. Kim, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me again. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>